alts. You may have heard this term being used around higher level players. If you listen further in those conversations, you may even hear stories about how these players were able to make enough money to help offset their losses from training traditionally expensive skills, such as crafting or construction. But what are alts, and why do people make them? Should you make one? And if you decide to make one, what do you even do on it? Hopefully in this video, you will find information to give you comfort in making an informed decision about alt accounts. So what is an alt? I'll keep this very simple. Alt stands for alternate. So it's an alternate account. Very simple. Ever since Jagex came out and said that multi-logging was no longer against the rules, there has been a spike in the amount of alts seen in the community, especially in the higher level community. The alts were created with one thing in mind, to make money to help fund their main account skilling endeavors so they didn't have to waste time making money or train skill using a slower or ineffective method. This is still the meta today, most effective tactic available if you don't know what meta stands for. Some people have two to three alts to fund their account. In this video, there's even a clip of someone doing this. Traditionally, these alts are doing AFK tasks that have a good return on their time. However, there are more click intensive alt methods out there revolving mainly around bossing and PVM as well. So should you make an alt? There's a couple questions you should ask yourself first before going on and making an alt. First and foremost is, are you okay with playing two accounts at the same time? Playing on two different accounts doing two different things is difficult for most people the first time they attempt it. So make sure it's actually enjoyable for you and that you are willing to learn how to do it effectively. Secondly is, do you have the time to dedicate to the account? Do you want to, you don't want to be wasting the membership on these accounts. Ideally, you want to be able to maximize your time on them and get the most returns. So do you have the time at your disposal to make this account work? Now this varies for everybody on whether it's worth it or not, but you need to ask yourself, the time that you have to allocate this, is it worth it to invest the time into it? You need to ask yourself that. Now that we've asked ourselves these kind of questions and you've decided yes to both of these, now we go down a different tree full of other options and other questions, so here we go. Number one, how much time do you want to invest into the account? This is probably the biggest question to ask yourself as it is considered the not fun portion of the account because you're generally operating at a loss here. This means that you are doing the training portion of the account where you're not making any money. You're just seeing your bank account go down, down, down without actually seeing any returns on it. So how much time are you willing to invest into it? You need to ask yourself that. And once you've reached a verdict on that, you can ask yourself number two. How much effort do you want to put into the account? It goes hand in hand with number one, as there are multiple ways to train an account to the stats that you need for the money making method, but one may be faster than the other and require more attention. Do you want to invest that attention or not? Some accounts may simply not have an alternative training method, and you may be stuck doing that one thing. So figure out how much you want to put it into the account. If there's an account that you want to build, but there's only one way to train it, and you are not a fan of the effort level of that training method, don't build the account, it's simple. Number three, how much money are you willing to invest into the account? It's pretty straightforward, but you need to know how much you're willing to spend on this account and figure out how long it will take for you to see returns on that. For an example, if an alt costs you 20 mil to make, but you get access to a method that makes one mil an hour, are you okay with having to do that method for at least 20 hours just to break even or not? Ask yourself that. And the last and most important question is, are you going to have fun doing whatever the method is? This is an alternate account, not your main. You do not have any kind of sentimental investment into this account like your main. You're not playing it all the time. You're not trying to progress it. You're not going for Max Cape or God Wars or Theater of Blood or whatever. This is simply just an account that you're using to make money to fund that main. Are you going to have fun doing whatever it is to make money? You don't have that sentimental investment to where you feel obligated to play it. Make sure that you're doing something that you're actually going to enjoy, and I promise it'll be so much easier for you to make money on that account. Okay, with those questions out of the way, you should have reached the decision of if you're ready to make the alt or not. Great. I have a few examples of some alts you could make coming up, but a disclaimer first. I will not be going over stereotypical alts that most people will tell you to make, such as Slayer alts or Cannonball alts. Slayer alts being the obvious 72, 75, 77 Slayer builds, and Cannonball alts being, well cannonball alts. These are constantly talked about and I do not want to rehash information some slash most of you may already know. 
My hope is that you will possibly get your interest peaked by one of these. However, most of them are quite click intensive and time intensive as they do offer the best returns. If you're interested in some more AFK slash list time investments, some examples I can give you would be, well, the cannonball alt that I refuse to talk about. You can do a cooking alt where you just cook food and sell food for profit. You do need to pay attention to prices though. Not all food is profitable or just a simple gathering also just like a fisher or woodcutter or a miner. They're all fine. They just don't have the best returns. However, if you're not used to playing on more than one account at the same time, this could be a good way to introduce you into it since they're relatively low click intensity. One last disclaimer. These are just skeleton accounts. By no means do you have to fully commit to one account type and not do anything else. Use one of the account types as a goal to start off with. And then once you get that money making method unlock, go ahead and train towards another one and unlock another one. There's no reason you can't. With all that being said, let's jump into some examples. Zora, some people's first real challenge in the game. Others first real money maker in the game. Well, what if I told you to make an alt that was only designed to kill Zora? What? That's right. With a two week time investment, you can easily have an account with 75 range of magic, 60 to 70 defense, 60 to 70 prayer, 51 agility, and the quest line done ready to camp Zora. No Tebow required dab on them. No, in all seriousness though, if you don't have a Tebow, this will be a rather click intensive alt. I'm assuming most of you won't have a Tebow because it's an alt and you shouldn't have a Tebow on the account anyway. So I don't know why I'm saying this, but you should know that if you don't have one, it's gonna be click intensive. However, if you are doing something like training mining at Mother Low Mine, or Redwoods, or Herb Lore, or Crafting, or whatever, then having an alt to do Zora for you to make some money would help negate some of those costs of your Bibles, or even help increase the money gained while doing the AFK gathering skills. As I have made this account a couple times in the past, some tips that I have from actually doing it are as follows. Now keep in mind, these are just my opinions, by no means the most efficient way to do this, so take it with a grain of salt. Number one, do all your prayer training at level three at the Wilderness Chaos Altar. You are much less likely um, to be PK when you're at level three to level five rather than being at, you know, after you've done all your combat training, you're level 70 or whatever. Do your prayer training first at the Chaos Altar. Only take one inventory of bones as well. The chance of you being PK is low, but you still don't want it to happen to you. Number two, do all of your combat training at Sand or Rock Crabs. Do not splash your magic, magic experience. As tempting as it is, you want those HP levels for when you camp Zora. Do Aver's Quest Line at level 30 range to help negate some of the price of ranging. Also upgrade at level 50 the amount of ammo saved at level 50 from the accumulator from the attractor is substantial. Finally, do the Regicide and Underground Pass at level 51 agility. Bring some Summer Pies to boost up for it. Do not waste your time in training to 56. The extra five levels do not make much of a difference in terms of the quest completion, and they are not worth it in terms of time investment. Obviously, startup costs for this kind of account are going to be running quite high, so you may want to consider doing a less costing alt to fund the supplies to do this one, but if you have the money, I would highly consider jamming one of these accounts out. This next alt, well, in all honesty, it's more like a main, but it is a serious time investment, but it is well worth it. It is a Vorcast slash Rune Dragon alt. You need 200 quest points because you need to complete Dragon Slayer 2, but with the potential of returns being up to 1.3 mil at Rune Dragons and 2.8 mil from Vorcath with top gear, but you can eventually get that on the alt through camping. It's hard to pass up mentioning this. There's not much really to say about this account other than once it's done, it does offer some nice versatility between Vorkath and Rune Dragons. Since you can do Vorkath when you need to AFK on your main and do Rune Dragons when you need to do things that are more click intensive on your main, since Rune Dragons really don't require a whole lot of attention. I'm not gonna try and fake and tell you that I've done this grind and I know you know, a few tricks about it. I do know a few people who have done this grind and they have told me that the rewards for this are definitely worth it having a consistent one mil plus afk money maker as an alt is nice to have in your back pocket however since i have not done this kind of alt so i've had time to make the kind of commitment required for this i will have a link to a spreadsheet in the description that outlines the optimal way to build this account including a list of supplies needed and gear needed and the order to do all of your questing if you're up for the challenge Take a look at the sheet to get some motivation, and I wish you the best of luck on your endeavor. Maybe one day I can make a series about creating one of these alts, just to see how well it works out. Now, I don't want to only include these high-level combat alts, so let me introduce you to my friend, the Sacred Eel Alt. 320k GP an hour, AFK, low effort, low money investment. 
For those of you looking for a quote-unquote traditional alt, here you go. A hefty 87 fishing requirement and 72 cooking requirement are really your only obstacle standing in your way besides doing the Registite quest line. But doing your training of Barbarian Fishing will help you with your agility so you don't actually have to train agility. And any time I don't have to normally train agility is a plus in my book. The overall way this account works is very simple. Step one, grab a fishing rod, some fishing bait, and a knife. Step two, go to where Zora is and look for the fishing spots just west of Zora. Step three, fish an inventory of eels. Step four, cut the eels for scales. Step five, repeat. Incredibly AFK alt method, and since scales are always in demand thanks to the trident, blowpipe, and serpentine helm, this alt money making method looks like it's here to stay. How about another non combat related alt? My friends, meet the smithing alt. Requirements for this account 30 smithing and a coal bag. And I've started the giant dwarf. On this account, you will be smelting bars using the blast furnace. The reason this is profitable is that the blast furnace only requires half the coal that is normally required to smelt certain bars. So steel bars, for example, would only take one coal instead of two, mithril two instead of four, adamantite three instead of six, and runite four instead of eight. As of the recording of this video, currently adamantite bars and steel bars give you the most amount of profit, so it is advised to be doing those instead of mithril or rune. However, all four are profitable, so keep an eye open when buying supplies as things do change and you want to be maximizing this profit. At the time of recording, adamantite bars can reward up to 607k per hour, and steel bars can reward up to 600k per hour. If you have never done the blast furnace before, it is a very click intensive method that will require a decent amount of attention in order for you to reap the most rewards. However, this account is also twofold because with the completion of the tourist trap, you also unlock the ability to smith dirt tips, which fluctuate between being profitable and not, as well as unfinished bolts but they are incredibly AFK in comparison to that of the Blast Furnace. So like the Rune Dragon Alt we discussed earlier, the perk of this account is that there is versatility built into the actual account, making it useful in almost all situations. And once you hit 99, you unlock the ability to smith Rune Plate Legs, Skirts, and Two-Handers, which is less AFK than Dart Tips, but more AFK than Blast Furnace. Thanks to Mudkit for this example, on his skiller, he was able to pull in 560k an hour. This is the stretch goal, but as you can see, maxing out the smithing goal and getting it to level 99 has some really nice rewards at the end. One tip I want to give you before moving off of this is that if you are doing the blast furnace, make sure that you deposit your coal first and not your ores. Because if you go to unload your iron and then unload your coal, it will smith the iron bars and then not recognize the coal that is in there. So put the coal in first and then put the ore in there. You don't want to be messing that up when you're doing steel bars. Trust me, I did. Hit <laughs> nerd. Okay, this is probably the most obscure alt type that you have probably heard of, but I need you all to trust me on this and hear me out on it. Barbarian Assault. Some of you may already know where I'm going with this, but for the rest of you that don't, let me talk for a second about something called BA Services. It is a CC that is designed to boost people through the BA minigame to obtain their untradeables or boost for pet or points or whatever. There's a price tag associated to everything that is boostable within the game, and here's a list for their pricing. If you, for those of you that can't do quick maths, this comes out to being anywhere from 8 to 11 mil an hour. That is insane. I spoke with a member from the CC and asked them about how long does it take normally for them to put together a team, and they mentioned that it could take anywhere from 2 minutes to 45 minutes. So there's some definite downtime there, but I also asked if there are generally any lulls in the CC, you know, where there's no work available. To which they replied by saying, very rarely does that happen, and it is more or less dependent on the time zone you are playing in when the work is the busiest. I would assume that the Aussie time zones are slower, but I have no confirmation on that, so I'm not going to say anything for certain. Now let's look at the requirements for this. The reason that this is such a good money maker is that the level at which you have to perform is very high. The footage I have in the background is actually from somebody in BA services being the attacker. And if you want to, you can just watch this. This is insane to watch at just the level at which they're performing. They've included what they observe you on when you're trialing for the CC and offered some guides to help teach you the way to do the things that they're observing you on when you're trialing for them, which is incredibly generous in my mind. On top of being absolutely stellar in your role, 
You also have other requirements that you have to meet as well. And the first thing I should note is that when you trial for this CC, you are not trialing to be just a member of the CC. You're trialing for a particular role. So what does that mean? It means you're trialing basically to be like a defender, an attacker, or a healer. All members of the CC are required to know Collector. It is not a difficult role, but you must learn how to do it effectively. So, the requirements for any role to trial is that you must be level 5 in all the roles, have 70 defense and 70 HP, or be 45 defense with 85 HP. If you want to try out to be an attacker, in addition to that, you must also have 90 range, 75 attack, 75 strength, 75 defense, and 90 HP. You must also have void or elite void, a melee gear swap consisting of serpentine helm, barrel's gloves, torture, Bearing, Anguish, Blessed Boots, Suffering if your defense is lower than 85, Magic Shortbow, Imbued, Magic Combo, Chrysler, D. Halberd, Din's Bulwark, Super Combats, and Raging Potions. <gasps> Whew. So, if you're making an ult, going for an attacker spot may not be what you want to go for. But, the healer and defender roles have no additional requirements besides the aforementioned stats that I mentioned earlier. On top of this, you must, like I said, know all the inner mechanics of the role and be able to perform them at a high level consistently. If you are able to do this, congratulations. You now have an ult that can make you a 8 to 11 mil an hour. This would be something to strive for and maybe something to add on into another account that you already have been working on as a supplemental money maker on the alt, but if you are really determined to do this, then go for it, and you can make, you, you can make hella bank with this. Another not so consistent alt type would be a rune crafting alt. No, I know what you're thinking. He's just gonna talk about crafting nature runes, or death runes, or wrath runes. No, we are a proud and proper people, and we do not succumb to peasanty things such as actually rune crafting. No, we are even lower than that. We are going to be running essence to people at ZMI Altar. You need 75 runecrafting for this, but it has the potential to earn you anywhere from 3 to 5 mil an hour, and it's semi-AFK. The startup requirements for this account are a little bit rough since you are required to have some weight-reducing gear, and generally that means having a few pieces of Graceful, which generally means that you need to have done some agility to actually obtain some marks of Grace. On top of that, you also need to have Lunar Diplomacy done in order to use the Arania Teleport, so you will need 71 magic as well. Startup costs for this account, or the supplies investment for this account, are not too high because we are just having to buy Pure Essence and Stamina Potions to maintain our speed with the Runecrafter. The only reason this isn't highly recommended is that you are at the disposal of how many people are looking for runners at the, that point in time, and it comes down to how quick you are to respond to their calls. So for this kind of account, it may be worth it to get 77 runecrafting and do blood runecrafting in the meanwhile, and when, when the opportunity presents itself, you have the option to go make a quick 3-5 to five mil. I'll have a link to the ZMI Discord in the description if you're interested in reading more about this or looking into being a runner for the Discord. They have a channel that posts about when people are actually looking for runners and you can respond in there and then that's how you can get notified if you're actually going to be running for people or not. Again, the reason I'm not making this a guaranteed alt option is that you cannot do this endlessly. Just like Barbarian Assault, you are restricted by player demand, but it is indeed a great boost to your cash deck if you have the option in your arsenal. So a side note about the footage that you see in the background, this is a footage of one guy operating on three accounts. He is training agility at RD Rooftops, while at the same time he is running Essence on two accounts. If this alt method is not AFK enough to where you can train agility and run two of the alts at the same time, then I don't know what AFK slash semi-AFK really even is anymore. Well... There you go. Six examples of some alts to make. Keep in mind that if you decide to make one of these alts, there's no reason you can't go and obtain the requirements to do another money making method. These are just skeletons to start you on your journey. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and if you did, remember to leave a like. Links to all my socials are in the description along with my Discord channel. Thank you guys so much for watching and have a good morning, afternoon, evening, night, whatever time of day it is, and I'll see you guys in the next video.